And good afternoon, welcome back here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage at AWS reInvent 22. We're in the Venetian here in Las Vegas, day two, it's Wednesday. Things are still rolling quite along. We have another segment for you as part of the Global Startup Program, uh, which is under the AWS Startup Showcase. I'm joined now by uh, Venkat Venkataramani, who is the CEO and co-founder of Rockset. Venkat, good to see you, sir. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no, a real pleasure, looking forward to it. Um, so first off, for some of our viewers who might not be familiar with Rockset, I know you've been on theCUBE a little bit, so you're, you're an alum, uh, but, but why don't you set the stage a little bit for Rockset and you know, where you're engaged with in terms of with AWS. Definitely. Rockset is a real-time analytics database that is built for the cloud. Uh, you know, we make uh, real-time applications possible in the cloud. Uh, you know, real-time applications need high concurrency, low latency query processing. Uh, data needs to be fresh. Your analytic needs to be fast. And uh, you know, we built on AWS, and that's why we are here. We are very, very proud partners of AWS. We are in the AWS Accelerate program, and also we are in the startup program of AWS. Uh, we're a strategic ISV partner, mm -hmm. and so, uh, yeah, we make real-time analytics uh, possible without all the cost and complexity barriers that are usually associated with it, mm -hmm. and uh, very, very happy to be part of this movement from batch to real-time that is happening in the world. Right, which is certainly an exciting trend, right? Yes. And I know great news for you. Uh, you made news yesterday, had an announcement uh, in, in involved with uh, Intel, with AWS, so why don't you share some of that with us too? Definitely. So you know, one one question that I always ask people is like, you know, if you go uh, perspective that I share is like, if you go ask hundred people, do you want fast analytics on fresh data, or slow analytics on stale data? <laughs> you know, hundred out of hundred would say fast and fresh. Sure. Right. So then the question is, why hasn't this happened already? Why is this still a new trend that is emerging as opposed to something that everybody's taking for granted? It really comes down to compute efficiency, right? I think it, you know, at, at the end of the day. Real-time analytics was always in using um, you know, technologies that are, let's say, 10 years ago, using, let's say, processors that were available 10 years ago to you know, pre-cloud uh, you know, days. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of complexity barriers associated with real-time analytics and also a lot of cost and, and performance barriers associated with it. And so, Rockset, from the, you know, from the very beginning, has been obsessing about building the most compute efficient real-time mm -hmm. database in the world. And you know, AWS on one hand, you know, allows us to make a consumption-based pricing model, so you only pay for what you use, sure. and that shatters all the cost barriers. And but in terms of compute efficiency, what we announced yesterday is um, the Intel's third-generation uh, Xeon scalable processors. Uh, it's codenamed Intel Ice Lake. Uh, when we ported over uh, Rockset uh, to that architecture, taking advantage of some of the instruction sets that Intel has. Uh, we got an 84% performance boost. 84. 84, 84. <laughs> that's uh, it's that's a, incredible, right? It's an, it's an incredible. It's, uh, my, the charts. it's an incredible milestone. It reduces um, the barrier even more in terms of cost, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and pushes the efficiency and sets a, a really new record for how efficient real-time uh, you know data processing can be in the mm -hmm. cloud, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's very very uh, exciting news. And so. Uh, we used to benchmark uh, ourselves against some of our other, you know, real-time, you know, uh, data uh, providers, and we were already faster. And now we've set a, a, a much, much higher bar for other people to follow. Yep. And, and so, what is it, or what was it about real-time that that you know was such a barrier? Um, because and now you've got the speed of, of course, obviously, the, and maybe that's what it was. But I think cost is probably part of that too, right? That's all part of that equation. I mean, real time so elusive. Yeah. So real time has this inherent uh, pattern that your data never stops coming, and when your data never stops coming, and you can now actually do analytics on that. Now, initially, people start with saying, "Oh, I just want a real time dashboard," and then very quickly they realize, "Well, the dashboard is actually in real time. I'm not going to be staring at it 24/7." Can you tap on my shoulder when something is off? Something mm -hmm. needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. So in which case you're constantly also asking the question, is everything okay? Is everything all right? Do I need to, is, is that something that I need to be you know, double clicking on and, and following up on? So essentially very quickly in real time analytics what happens is your queries never stop. The questions that you're asking on your data never mm -hmm. stops. Mm -hmm. And it's often a program asking the question to detect anomalies and things like that. And your data never stops coming. And so compute is running 24 seven. Mm -hmm. If you look at traditional data warehouses and data lakes, they are not really optimized for these kinds of workloads. Mm -hmm. They are optimized to store massive volumes of data and in a storage efficient format, and when an analyst comes and asks a question to generate a report, 
You can spin up a whole bunch of compute, generate the report, and tear it all down when you're done. Mm -hmm. Well, that is not compute running 24-7 to continuously you know, you know, keep ingesting the data or continuously keep answering questions. So the compute efficiency that is needed is, is much, much, much higher, right? And that is why you know, Rockset was born. So from the very beginning, we're only built uh, you know, for these use cases. Mm -hmm. We have a, an extremely powerful SQL engine that can give you full feature SQL analytics mm -hmm. in a very, very compute efficient way in the mm -hmm. cloud. All right, so, so um, let's talk about the leap that you've made, say in the last two years. And, and, and what's been the spur of that? What has been allowed you to, to create this you know, obviously a, a different kind of an array for your customers uh, from which to choose, but, but what's been the spark, you think? We touched upon this a little earlier, right? The spark is really, you know, the world going from batch to real time. Mm -hmm. So if you look at mainstream adoption of technologies like Apache Kafka and Confluent doing a really good job mm -hmm. at that, uh, in, in, in growing that community uh, and, and use cases, now businesses are now acquiring business data, really important business data in real time. Now they want to operationalize it, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, extract-based uh, static reports and BI, you know, business intelligence is getting replaced in all modern enterprises with what we call operational intelligence, mm -hmm. right? Don't tell me what happened last quarter and how to plan this quarter better. Tell me what's happening today, what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's your business operations using data to make day-to-day -day decisions better that either grows your top line compresses your bottom line, eliminates risk that are inherently creeping up in your business, sure. you know, eliminate potential churn uh, from a customer, uh, or fraud uh, you know, detection, and, and getting on top of you know, that uh, you know, a minute into, this, into, into an outage as opposed to an hour into the outage. Right. And so essentially I think businesses are now realizing that operational intelligence and operational analytics really you know, allows them to leverage data, and especially real-time data, to make their, you know, to grow their businesses faster and more efficiently, and especially in this kind of macro environment, that is, you know, more important to have better unit economics in your business than ever before. Sure. And so that is really, I think, that is the real market movement happening, and and we are here to just serve that market. We are making it much much easier for companies that have already adopted, you know, streaming technologies like Kafka and 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 you know, AWS Kinesis. MSK and all these technologies, now businesses are acquiring these data in real time, now they can also get real time analytics on the other end of it. Sure. Yeah, you, know, you, you just touched on this and, and I'd like to hear your thoughts about this, about, about the economic environment, because it does drive decisions, right? And it does motivate people to look for uh, efficiencies and maybe costs, you know, right? Cutting costs. Um, what are you seeing right now in terms of that, that kind of looming influence, right, that the economy can have in terms of driving decisions about where investments are being made and what expectations are in terms of delivering value, more value for the buck. Exactly, I think we see across the board, all of our customers come back and tell us, we don't want to manage data infrastructure and we don't want to do kind of DIY open source clusters, we don't want to manage and scale and build giant data ops and DevOps teams to manage mm -hmm. that because that is not really you know, in their business. You know, we have car rental companies want to do, be better at car rentals. We want airlines to be a better airline and they don't want their, you know, a massive investment in DevOps and data ops uh, which is not really their core business mm -hmm. and they really want to leverage, uh, you know, you know, fully managed and you know, cloud offerings like Rockset, um, you know, built on AWS, massively scalable in the cloud with zero operational overhead, very, very easy to get started and scale, and so that completely removes all the operational overhead, and so they can invest the resources they have, the manpower they have, the calories that they have mm -hmm. on actually growing their businesses because that is what really going to allow them to have better unit economics. Right, yep. so everybody that is on my payroll is helping me grow my top line uh, or shrink my bottom line, eliminate risk in my business and, 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 and churn and, and fraud and other, and el eliminate all of those uh, risks that are inherent in my business. Um, so, so that is where I think a lot of the investment's going. So gone are the days where you know, you're going to have this you know, five to 10 person team managing a very hard to operate uh, you know, open source mm -hmm. data management clusters on EC2 nodes in, um, in AWS and, and kind of DIYing it th mm -hmm. their way because 
those 10 people, you know, if they, all they do is just operational maintenance of uh, infrastructure, which is a means to an end, you're way better off, you know, using a cloud, you know, a bond in the cloud built for the cloud solution like Rockset, mm -hmm. and eliminate all that cost, and, and replace that with an operationally much, much simpler, you know, um, system to, op, you know, uh, to, to work with such as, such as Rockset. So that is really the big trend that we're seeing, why, mm -hmm. you know, not only real time is going more and more mainstream, uh, cloud native solutions are the real future, even when it comes to real time, mm -hmm. because the complexity barrier needs to be uh, shattered, uh, and on only cloud native solutions can actually. And you do get that. the two C's cost and complexity, right? That you have, you need to address. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. You know, what what is it about um, building trust with your with your clients, with your partners? Um, because you, you're talking about this cloud environment that that everyone is talking about, right? Not everyone's made that commitment. Um, there are still some foot draggers uh, out there. Um, how are you going about establishing confidence and establishing trust and, and, and providing them with really concrete examples of the values and the benefits that you can provide you know, with, uh, with these opportunities? So, you know, I grew up, uh, uh, so there's a few ways to, uh, to, to, to answer this question. I'll, 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 come, I'll, I'll cover all the angles. So in, in, in order to establish trust, you have to create value. They ha you know, your customer has to see that with you, they were able to solve the problem faster, better, cheaper, and mm -hmm. they're able to, you know, have a, the business impact they were looking for, which is why they started the project in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so establishing that and proving that, I think there's no equivalence to that. And you know, I grew up at, uh, at, at you know, at Facebook back in the day. Uh, you know, I was managing online data infrastructure okay. for Facebook from 2007 and 2015. And internally, we always had this kind of culture of all the product teams building on top of the infrastructure that my team was responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so they were not ever, uh, there was never a, a customer vendor relationship internally within Facebook. They were all like, we're all part of the same team. We're partnering here to have you, uh, you know, to help you have a successful product launch. There's a very similar DNA that, I, that I, I exists in Rockset when our customers work with us mm -hmm. and they come to us and we are there to make them successful. Our consumption-based pricing model also forces us to say, they're not going to really use Rockset and consume more. I mean, we don't make money until they consume. Right. And so their success is very much integral part of our, our success. And so that, I think, is one really important angle on, you know, give us a shot, come and do an evaluation, and we will work with you to build the most efficient way uh, mm -hmm. to solve your problem, and then when you succeed, we succeed. So that, I think, is a very important aspect. The second one is AWS partnership. Uh, you know, we are an ISV partner, you know, uh, AWS, a lot of the time, that really helps us establish trust, and a lot of the time, one of the uh, the, the people that they uh, look up to when a customer comes in saying, hey, what is, who is Rockset, you know. Who are your friends? Yeah, who are your friends, right. and then, you know, and then the AWS will go like, oh, you know, we'll tell you, you know, all these other successful case studies that Rockset has, you know, um, you know built up on, you know, the world's largest insurance provider, uh, Europe's largest insurance provider, uh, we have customers like you know JetBlue Airlines to uh, Klarna, which is a, a, a big buy now pay later company, and so so all these case studies help, and and and, and platform and, and partners like AWS helps us helps you amplify that that you know and 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 and, and give more credibility, and last but not least, compliance matters. You know, mm -hmm. being SOC 2, TAP 2 compliant is is a really important part of establishing trust. We are HIPAA compliant now, so that you know we can you know PII, PHI sure. data handling that. Uh, and so I think that will continue to be a, part, a big part of our focus in improving the security, uh, you know, functionality and, and capabilities that Rockset has in the cloud, and also compliance and, and the set of, you know, um, you know, standards that we are going to be compliant against. Well, I'm glad you hit on the AWS too, because I did want to bring that up. I, I appreciate that, and I know um, they appreciate the relationship as well. Thanks for the time here. It's Thank you. It's been a pleasure awesome. learning about Rockset and what you're up to. Thank you. You it's bet. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Venkat. All right, you are watching uh, the Cube coverage here at AWS reInvent 22, and on the Cube, of course, the uh, leader, the leader in high-tech coverage.